Welcome, Park Avenue Church family. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord once again. Here we are on another Wednesday, and we're ready for Wednesday Bible study. And we hope that all of you are well and doing everything that you possibly can to stay safe and to stay sanitized and to stay sane in this pandemic time in which we live. And I'm telling you, it's getting tougher and tougher, but brighter days are ahead, and we're looking forward to having more and more, more and more fellowship. I want to uh, certainly invite all of you and, 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 and direct your attention to our lesson today that's housed in the gospel as recorded by John. John chapter 16, verse 33. We're only going to take a look at one verse today, and I'm going to be sharing from two different versions. John chapter 16, verse 33. First, I'll be reading from the New International Version, and then secondly, we'll be reading from the New King James Version. So we pray that all of you have your Bibles, whether it be a hard copy, whether it be a Bible app, Certainly you have those instruments and apparatuses available. Let's get them out and let's get ready to go into the Word of God on today. John chapter 16, verse 33. We're going to pray and then we'll be ready for the Word. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time of study. We thank you for your Holy Word. We thank you for these nine people who are tuning in via YouTube and Facebook, and certainly we pray, Lord, that your word will go forth. Truly, we pray, Lord, that people will be blessed, and we ask now that you will just have thine way with me. Use me to thine own glory, and I pray that your word will go forth to the end that a sinner might be reached, and the saints would be revived. Now allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight, for Lord, you are my strength, and you surely are my redeemer. And it's in the name of Jesus the Christ, servant's prayer. Amen. John chapter 16, verse 33. Here we go. Jesus writes, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Now from the New King James Version, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his holy and righteous word. I want to use as a topic today for our lesson, overcoming troubled times. Come on, say it with me. Overcoming troubled times. Certainly, let me give you a brief outline as it relates to the lesson that we read in your hearing today. First of all, we look at a word of composure, a word of composure, for Jesus says, in me you may have peace. Nowhere else but in me you will have peace. And the Bible even shares and declares in Isaiah chapter 26, that we will be kept in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Amen. So first of all, we look at a word of composure. And then the second thing in this particular verse, we see a word of certainty. A word of certainty. He says, in this world, you will have trouble. In this world, you will have tribulation. Tribulation comes from the Greek word tribulo, which simply means trouble. In this world, you will have trouble. And right now, 
We are in much trouble all over this land, in this world, in these continental United States in which we live. We have trouble times before us. First of all, word of composure, this text says something secondly about a word of certainty. And then also this word, this text says a word gives us a word of command. A word of command. Listen to what Jesus says. In spite of all that you're dealing with and the trouble that you're experiencing right now, Jesus says, but be of good cheer. He says, but take heart. Reason why, he says, because I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. Certainly we realize that trouble is present. Why do we have trouble? Why do we have trouble? Why are troubled times used as a means of stimulus? Stimulus comes from going through troubled times. The psalmist writes, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I'm walking through. And stimulus comes from going through troubled times. Not only the stimulus comes from going through troubled times, but strength comes from being in a troubled state. Sting, strength comes from being in a troubled state. Psalms 46, verse first, 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 first says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. That's good news. Now our world, our nation, our people have been hit with terrible, terrible trouble. During these continental United States, America has been shut down. We've been given orders by both local and national and state government officials that we are to stay at home. We have nothing going on right now. Our whole societal system has been altered. Nothing has never happened like this before. Let me say something. I want to say something about coronavirus for a second. The coronavirus, first of all, is not new. This just so happened to be a novel, uh, a new strand if you will, of the coronavirus. The coronavirus is a virus that through mutation jumps from animals to human beings. This is not the first time this has happened. Back in 2001, 2002, there was a coronavirus called SARS. S-A-R-S is the acronym, SARS, and it stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. It was a virus that uh, first attached itself to cats. That's right, it attached itself to cats. Then it was able to mutate and attach itself to the cells of humans. And that's what a coronavirus is. It is a virus that animals attract and it jumps from the cells of animals all by way of mutation to the cells of human beings. Coronavirus, COVID-19, is the virus that was discovered in the year 2019. That's why it's called COVID-19. And it is believed to have started in a city called Wuhan, China. And while SARS was a virus that jumped from cats to human, COVID-19 came from bats, that's right, came from bats, and the cells from the bats jumped to human beings. Now in most instances, 
virus, blacks that not jump to animals don't jump onto human beings because human beings naturally we have different types of cells other than animals. We have different cells than animals. But this virus, this virus is very smart. Lord have mercy. They somehow, some way figure out what they must do to connect to the human cells. And this is what's called mutation. It's like an unto a jigsaw puzzle piece, if you will, as it's trying, as you try to find the piece that where it figured out where it fits. And what had happened was the virus figured out a way to latch on to, to mutate to human cells. And it's dead. And there is no immunity for this deadly virus. All of us, all of us, let me make, make this perfectly clear. I know they have talked about various age ranges, 60 and above, more susceptible, and then we realize that it's not just the older generation, but it's the middle age and it's even the young people. All of us are susceptible to COVID-19. Now what makes it so deadly is it's a stealth virus. That's right, a stealth virus. You may show signs of influenza, you know, the flu, like in a day or two, but you may not show signs of COVID-19 for two weeks or more. And you could have touched someone or been around someone who has been infected, and all of a sudden, you are infected and don't even know you have it, and you may be even infecting others as you go around them. That's why testing is so vital, and it's important to understand that more and more testing will be taking place, and I encourage all of us to, make, to be tested to make sure that we don't have it, and if we do not get tested, we never will know, but uh, I don't know, maybe this is sometimes some people are in trouble, there's just no need to know certain things, but I do want to make this clear, testing is vital. Amen. Now, if you test positive, you're immediately quarantined so you won't infect anyone else. This is how rapidly this, this, this virus can mutate. It can move. Ten can have it. And from those ten, that can grow to a hundred. And if that hundred group has it, that hundred group can, can infect upwards to a thousand and it grows cases and cases grow stronger and spread the virus and we not even know it and once discovered by the sudden increase in cases you now move from what might, what might have been just an epidemic now it's a full-fledged pandemic it has uh, grown and reached international proportion and it is certainly out of control and what makes it even more tragic we don't have, watch this, a natural immune system to fight off the virus. We have, over time, we have been able to uh, build up inside of our bodies antibodies, but that is not something that we're able to do as far as this coronavirus is concerned. We have no antibodies, nor do we have any vaccination available that can block the spread of COVID-19. And so the harsh reality of all of this is, if you will, if you get it, and you get sick, and get over it, or you will get it, get sick, and you will die. That's why you hear the report that says so many cases, so many deaths, some are recovered, and truly, we should understand that those that have recovered, they're, they're making a request for them to uh, give blood so that they can find out just exactly how it was and what, what caused the recovery. Because all of this is in a very infant stage of development. The pathogens 
by which the coronavirus travels is through coughing and sneezing. It becomes airborne, touching, hugging, embracing, and certainly when you do that, that is another way that it travels. We have to be careful. We have to make sure we wash our hands. Wash your hands. I know you might feel that you wash them every time you're turning around, you're washing your hands, putting on those hand sanitizers, but keep on doing it because you can get it from people touching doorknobs, these grocery cart carts when we go to the stores to get the essential things that we need. I know many of our stores like Costco and Price Chopper and Walmart, they are spraying down and wiping down the carts, but it's nothing like you wiping it down yourself and making sure, and then you can even be even safer than that. You can wear your gloves, wear your gloves, so that way you won't have a full contact with any surfaces. And then certainly we realize that even if you touch items in the store, because sometimes people have maybe latched on to something and didn't want to put it back, and then here you come, and then you pick it up, and then don't tell me. So it's almost like you're afraid to touch anything or anybody. And God forbid, if anybody sneezes or coughs, I remember I was standing in line at one of the uh, local supermarkets here, <laughs> And all of a sudden, the person behind me was actually was too close because they put down tape on the floor, you know. And that's where you're supposed to stand until it's your time to move up to the cash register. Well, this person was too close, and all of a sudden, they just called. And I could tell that they didn't cover up that because it came out so loud and strong. And I turned around, and I said something, and I almost forgot that I was a Christian. Because I'm like, what in the world are you thinking? Coughing right on the back of my head, and you don't even cover it up. Lord have mercy. But I maintain, children. I, I didn't say it. I maintain. I maintain. I let that person know that I love the Lord. I love the Lord. We chose, we chose to shut down here at Park Avenue our own campus services, all of our meetings, all of our activities. Activities and we've been tempted to try to have small groups, but I'd rather just not do anything than everyone just stay at home. We come together basically to video and record our Sunday services so that we may be able to send it out and be viewed by our family, church family, and those who choose to sign in and look on board as well. And we, we, we choose to shut down our own campus of service and meetings and activities, not because we were fearful, but because we chose to be responsible. Let me say that again. We didn't close them down because we were afraid. Because, let me tell you, God did not give us the spirit of fear. But three things he did give us, and that was power, love, and a sound mind. And, but we chose to be responsible. And certainly we realize that you got to be out of your mind if you are still gathering in large crowds, talking about touching and agreeing, not, not taking all of the protective sanitary measures that have been set forth. And matter of fact, I see a group of young people it was in a residence, I don't know what the occasion was, but it was a whole full-fledged gathering. Had to be over in excess of 35, 40 people. And I know what I saw because I wasn't driving that fast because I couldn't understand why all these people were in this one gathering together knowing that we had this pandemic that we were dealing with. And if I was with my eyes and receiving, it looked like somebody was passing something to another person after they got through with it. They passed it to the next person, and they took it, and they did what they did with it. And then they passed it to another person, and I just shook my head, and I said, Lord, please save them. Please help them, Lord, for they know not what they are doing. Listen, this is serious. Listen, this is serious, and we must understand. 
Not only did we choose to go online and, and versus on campus, but the Bible tells us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So we love, we love, we love each other well enough and we don't want to put no one in harm, a harm's way. We don't want to put no one in danger. So we ask that everyone please continue to be vigilant and staying at home, going out only if necessary. And if you have to go out, please make sure you carry the proper utensils. You need a mask. I don't care what President Trump or anybody else that said they don't need a mask. I got a mask, I wear a mask, and it's a Spider-Man mask. My grandchildren wanted me to have a mask like that. They said, Papa, we're going to make you a Spider-Man mask so you can have one on like we got. So I wear my Spider-Man mask, and I try to stay a distance with folks. And I remember it just hurt my heart. It was just this past few days ago, I went by and I dropped off some uh, Easter items for my grandchildren which I always give them something in my Easter baskets. And no sooner I got in the driveway and I was on my way up to the porch just to sit them on the porch, my little grandson came running out and said, pop on! And he ran at me like he wanted to come to me up and I had to back away from him and it just hurt my heart. I kept telling him, stop, 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 stop. It just hurt my heart that I could not even help him. But he knows, he said, he, his mom had told me that she had talked to them about the coronavirus, and certainly we want to make sure that we continue to show our love for one another. And I have discovered that we can have, watch this, we can have the presence of worship without being present in worship. My, 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 that's pretty good. Let me say it again. Yes, we can have the presence of worship without being present in worship. Just like right now, I'm speaking to an empty, empty sanctuary, and it's does. I haven't quite gotten used to this yet, but I understand the need for it. And one of the things that I realized here at the park, we have never gone online before. We've never done anything YouTube, Facebook, technology-wise. But here we are, and quite frankly, I'm impressed at the results because I found out there are more people watching than there was attending. Now, LOL that. Yes, sir. So we thank God for the opportunity to go online. Listen, trouble has stimulated us to the field of technology. My, my, my. And we're able to reach more now than we have before to Christ. This, these troubled times have taken us back to a taught lesson. Our parents and our grandparents told us over and over again, wash your hands, wash your hands. You come in from outside playing, wash your hands before you sit down and eat dinner, wash your hands. And, 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 and the good part about washing your hands Use plenty of good soap. Use plenty of good soap and good warm hot water. Soap breaks down the bacteria. Amen. And then the water will just rinse it all the way down in the drain. Now, we seek to be more sanitary than ever. Physical hygiene has become our number two priority right behind God. God is still and should always remain our number one priority. So stay at home. Be your relationships. Everybody's in one place, and I know some of you are probably going bonkers because you're not used to it, because everybody's so used to running in and out of the house, running around, ready, gotta go here, gotta go there, gotta be here, gotta be there at this time, that time. But all of a sudden you realize you don't have that much business to tend to anyway. And also another thing that comes from troubled times is financial stability. No shopping, no spending. Oh, say it with me. No shopping, no spending. It's an opportunity you can save, save, and save. No outrageous prices for movies. No overpriced sporting events. No entertainment costs that are off the chain for these 
concerts and partying at the clubs where some of you go, no impulsive punk purchasing, buying only what we need. Troubled times, troubled times will cause that. Troubled times have been changed by partisan politics. Our Congress, our Senate, and our President Donald Trump have signed it, whereas on April 1st, it was scheduled to be 700,000 people were scheduled to be taken off of food stamps. Lord have mercy. But because of these troubled times, now there's paid sick leave, there's paid medical leave, there's unemployment stimulus, there's individual stimulus, there's family stimulus packages, there's money the Lord being made possible for everyone and past so many stimulus packages. The Small Business Association has money for the small business and the churches as well. And look, when we look back at all of this, it was the trouble, my, 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 that allowed the opportunity for us to be overcomers. You know, in 1915, 90% of all blacks lived in the South and they worked in cotton fields. We were poor. We was at the bottom of the economic ladder. We were stuck in that situation. But a bug came all the way from South America. And the name of that bug was called a bow weevil. Some of y'all remember what I'm talking about. And this boy weevil had attached itself to the cotton and it has destroyed the entire cotton industry. And in addition to that, over in Europe, there was a war going on called World War I. And because there was a war going on, European immigrants could not come to the United States and occupy the many jobs that were available in the industrial north. And at the same time, there's a bug in the south called the bow weevil. So companies like Ford and General Motors and all the big industrial plants in the north, what they did, they came down south and started recruiting blacks from the plantations and the farms, and they were recruited to move north and to work in the industrial plants, making much more money than they did while it was on those farms. In this period of time, it was called the Great Migration. Some of you all remember that in history buff, the Great Migration. But please know that the only reason why we migrated, the only reason why we got jobs in Chicago and Detroit and Philadelphia and places of such, was because of trouble. It was a bug that stimulated us to higher heights. It was a war that strengthened our hopes for a better day. And our country, this world right now, is in trouble times right now because of COVID-19. But never forget, never forget the words that that tent maker from Tarsus spoke when he says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Let me go on and close this before I get too happy. Listen, there's two responses you can choose when trouble comes. Watch this, write it down if you like. First of all, when trouble comes, we can become irritated and endure the trouble. Let me say it again. The first, the first response can be, we can become irritated and we can endure the trouble. All these screws and clothes, and there's no entertainment, there's no sports. I'm just going to stick it out because I just know that this is going to be over in a month or two. Or the second response is we can become stimulated and employ the trouble. My, my, my. We can become stimulated and we can employ the trouble. And the Christian response to COVID-19 is found in item number two. Like, for instance, let me give you an example. When a rooster 
is sitting on a fence and a real hard, strong wind comes, what the rooster would do, the rooster would fold his wings and clam up and close up and just sit there and just wait until the wind will die down. But an eagle is different. When a strong wind comes at an eagle, he opens up his wings and he allows the wind to lift him to higher, higher heights. And maybe it's time you got lifted. Maybe it's time that you rise above the stagnant living of used to be yesterday. See, we can become so stuck in our status quo situation, we miss the winds of opportunity to be and to do more of what God created us for. It's time, it's time for us to grow stronger in relationship and fellowship with God. This is the opportune time. It's time to serve in a greater way for yes, the harvest is truly present, plenteous. There is much work to be done. We've learned new technology because of trouble. We've learned, we've learned, uh, we've become better communicators because of trouble. We've become more caring and concerned for our families and others because of trouble. Because of the troubled times, we become cleaner because of an aggressive hygiene campaign. And not only are we as a people are clear, our homes are clean, our workplaces are clear, our cars are clear, our clothes are clear. Because of this trouble, Dr. Martin Luther King wrote says, we are caught up in an unescapable network of mutuality. There is no respected person, there is no difference. We all are dealing with the same kind of trouble. Above any and all of that, though, because of this trouble, we must know that we need God. And the stimulus of this trouble helps us to recognize that we need God. Any trouble that stimulus stimulates us to pray, to trust God, to seek His face, it's only when you're at the Red Sea. Yeah, yeah, when you ask God to help you. It's only when you're at the lion, in the lion's den, when you ask God to help you. Oh my. It's only when you sit behind the doctor's chair when you ask God to help you. Because sometimes it takes trouble to get us to say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where else? My, 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 shall I go? Let us pray, let us pray, let us pray. Lord, we do thank you. We thank you for this word, and we thank you for the encouragement, realizing, Lord, that we want to be like that eagle. We realize, that, Lord, that we have to understand that when trouble comes, we want to employ, and we want to do and take the message that is coming through the trouble. We realize, Lord, that times like these, we have you, and you are truly all that we need. So we thank you, and we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. God bless you.